Buenos dias! In today's video, I will be talking about what my grad school essentials have been. And right now, I am dressed to go to work and I will have school after. And um, I will, I don't know if I'm gonna sit down and record this or not, or if it's just gonna be something that I just talk about throughout the day. But welcome to the vlog, even though this is not a vlog. Welcome to the video. Okay, so to me, I feel like having a lot of bags that aren't backpacks is important because I don't like wearing backpacks. I feel like they're too big, they're too bulky, and I'm honestly never bringing that many things with me to class anyways. So I always have something like this, which is my Brandon Blackwood purse, which is like a backpack purse, which I never use this regularly. I only ever use it for carrying things to work or carrying things to school which i'm always going to school right after work so same difference but it's it's small enough that i don't think it's too bulky but it's big enough to fit everything that i take with me to class in there and i'm never really bringing that many things with me to class like i never really bring my books with me i never really bring i don't have a big laptop um i don't have a laptop at all we'll get into that but Something like this, or I have a bajillion, gajillion tote bags. So it fits everything I need for work and for school into this bag while also fitting my aesthetic with like what I wear and not being too bulky. That would annoy me. And you know, it's like, it's more for convenience for me and for aesthetic, but not as much aesthetic, more convenience of not having something super bulky on because I never really liked big purses or big backpacks anyway so it was just like out of necessity but once I hit college never had a backpack anymore undergrad always carried my stuff around in like a small tote or something like that because I hated backpacks same during grad school I also never have brought a backpack to school always have a tote bag or this bag with me so as somebody who goes to school in the city, I think it's really important to have a travel card for whatever type of transit you have in your city. We have the CTA here and you can get a venture card and I have one through my school that's called the U-Pass and it gives me unlimited train rides for the entire semester and bus rides for the entire semester for one flat rate instead of buying a monthly pass every month. So I end up saving a lot of money. And for me specifically, I don't pay for it. My employers pay for it for me. But um, even if I were paying for it myself, you save a lot of money because usually it's like $130 for the entire semester while getting a monthly pass is $75 a month. So that's a big difference. And it's good because, you know, I never have to pay to go to and from the school building. And if I want to go to the library to study or anywhere else to like meet up with um, classmates to study or something like that, or if I have an assignment that requires me to go do an observation somewhere, I can get there for free, which is nice. And Chicago has a really good transit system. So I can just take the train, take the bus, get wherever I need to go. And I don't have to worry about paying for it. So that's very good. And also, like, it's not just something that I can use for school. So having this card, I can use it all the time, which is very helpful, very useful, because I hate paying for Ubers. So if I have a way to get around for free, basically, and in my brain, even if I were paying for this card, I pay that fee once, and then I get to ride for free, you know? So it's, like, very important to have. Change of location. So the next thing that I think is essential for me and my grad school journey is having a nice pair of noise canceling headphones because um you live with people who are loud sometimes and i mean if you're great and you're having your life living alone awesome i still think that having headphones is nice because who knows what's going to be happening with your neighbors or if you're gonna be somewhere else in an environment where you're trying to study and there's just a lot going on i just feel like having noise canceling headphones where you can just be in your own world no matter where you are is nice and don't come at me and be like oh it's so dangerous to be somewhere where you can't hear anything i don't care i love not being able to hear what's going on around me okay i'm in public 
I got my music blasting. I can't tell what's going on. Great. Love that. But especially when I'm studying and I can just have my calming playlist on in my ears and I'm reading and I'm not getting disturbed by everything that's going around me. Um, and that's true for being in a space that's not my home. And it's also true for being in my home because I live with my brother and my sister and not so much my sister, but my brother, very loud person. So noise canceling headphones are a must for me. So um, I don't have a laptop, but I do have an iPad. And I made that decision very intentionally where I, my old laptop was just kaboot. It was dying. It was old. It was not doing what it needed to do. And it was no longer serving the purpose that it was supposed to be serving. So I was in this place where I needed to get a new thing to use. And I decided that getting an iPad for me was better than getting a laptop. And with my iPad, I do have, I do have this keyboard which is um it's an apple keyboard and it's attached and it i can type with it when i'm taking when i'm writing papers mostly but i got the ipad because i like taking handwritten notes but i hate having a bunch of notebooks around and wasting all of that paper because to be honest i love taking handwritten notes during class but it's few and far between where you see me going back in those notes and reading them again so <clears throat> Taking the notes on the iPad is a way where I can still take the notes and like I'm having that processing going on during class where I'm taking notes and paying attention a lot better and helping me focus, but I'm not wasting all of those where I'm not wasting all of that paper. This is supposed to be nice, calm breakfast time and it is not, <laughs> but you're having nice, calm breakfast time. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, um, not wasting a bunch of newspaper. No, not wasting a bunch of notebook paper, but I'm still taking the notes. And also what I like about it too. I have like an Apple Pencil and it has like sensors or whatever. So it writes like you're using a pen, like you're using a marker, blah, 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 blah. but also because it is a handwritten note and all of the technology, even if I did want to go back into my notes and review what I've written, I can look up keywords and it'll go back in my handwritten notes and say, hey, this is when you wrote about psychological needs. This is when you wrote about healthcare settings, blah, 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 you know? So it's a lot easier to go back into my handwritten notes if they are on the iPad rather than just flipping through a bunch of pages in a notebook. So this one very much for me is nice, is having an Amazon Kindle slash Kindle account slash the Kindle app on my iPad because I get a lot of ebooks instead of getting physical books i have physical book, physical books as well location change again so i like having a kindle because if i'm reading and i'm highlighting things it's nice to just be able to look up what i have already highlighted or look up specific words when i'm doing assignments or when i'm studying for something i don't know i don't really have exams so basically when i'm doing assignments it's nice to have the kindle because i can look up exactly what it is that i need to know rather than flipping through pages of notes or flipping through the book when I'm looking for a quote specifically. So a lot of this is similar to where there is more ease when looking at the resources rather than having a notebook or a physical book, having the digital notes or having the digital book for me is easier. And I like having physical books just in general, um, but it's just not as easy, so. Kindle all the way and with the membership some of the books are cheaper like if you have Kindle Unlimited sometimes you can get the book for free or you can get them cheaper and a lot of the times if you have a library card essential if you have a library card they have online resources where you can download ebooks through the library of your town city county whatever you can download an ebook to your Kindle that way or if your school has a digital library, sometimes you can also download it to your Kindle that way. And there's also a way if you're downloading articles, those can also go on your Kindle. Like you can email them to your Kindle address and it'll download onto your Kindle. You can find that out looking online because I don't, I barely even know how that works, but I do it sometimes. So another thing that I think is essential for me as a grad student is being a part of the society because I can't think of another word for lack of a better term part of the society that I'm going to be in in my career so um, I am a student member of the Association of Child Life Professionals and once I become like an actual CCLS then I can join at a different member type but as a student like you get access to different databases and you get access to books at a lower cost which all of the child life courses 
basically you're going to be using child life books for so it's nice to have a lower price for that and also um it's just nice to get used to the website that you're going to be using if there is one while you are a professional if they have a student type membership because i'm going to be using that once i'm getting my pdus and stuff like that or I'm, if i'm looking for ways to get pdus slash if i'm putting my pdus in the system which i talked about what a pdu is in my child life video so look at that but being a part of the association gives a lot of perks as a student member so i think that as a grad student, if you have the opportunity to be a student member of the any association that you're going to be part of in your career, I think that it is essential that you join that and use those resources to your benefit because there's stuff that I wouldn't know about and I might be a little more stressed in this process if I wasn't a part of that website and if I didn't peruse the website and use it to my advantage because I do have some classmates who have been more stressed than me and I'm, I'm coasting because... All of the information is there for me and all of the information is probably there for you. It's just you have to take that step and look and not just rely on other people. Not, like don't even rely on your program directors or your advisors. Don't rely on them. Like rely on yourself to get this information and then you can ask for extra help if you need it because that is what they're there for. But I don't think in my personal philosophy they're not there to hold my hand every step of the way and like give me specific direction into what I'm supposed to do. So taking that initiative myself to look through things and then ask questions if I can't find the answer myself, that is the kind of student I am. So it is essential for me to be part of the association. So this one, I don't, I don't I'm going to put this in here because I think that it really is essential, but I don't know if you're going to count this as like, oh, as a grad student, this is what I should have. But I think that as a grad student, it is essential to have hobbies because you're going to be probably a little stressed from time to time. And you're likely going to be busy from time to time with all of the work that you have to do and all of the readings that you have to do. So it is essential to have something that you can do to take the stress away. And for me, it's I have a class pass membership so I can go do yoga and I can go do bar classes or I can go get a facial or a massage, which those two aren't really hobbies. I think that the yoga is a hobby, though. I go and I do hot yoga basically every week. I also made a hobby of going to the gym with boyfriend um because i don't really like going to the gym and honestly i wouldn't go if he didn't go but to in order to get more quality time when he's not working when i'm not working when i'm not doing schoolwork, when he's not doing work at home going to the gym together is a way that you know you can relieve stress you can increase those good happy hormones and you can spend time together and then also there's just like I really much value being able to do what you want to do. So I, I like to say that I'm a jack of all trades because every month, you know, I'm doing something different. Maybe I'm crocheting, maybe I'm painting, maybe I took up roller skating, maybe I'm making YouTube videos all of a sudden once again because, you know, it's just fun. I like doing things that are fun because it's going to make it that much easier to survive being in grad school. You can't just be... And go 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 all of the time you need something that's going to take you back and that's going to allow you to get that rest that you need and get that rejuvenation and revitalize yourself to go again the next week you know so it is essential for me to have hobbies and you can even say not even just have hobbies but to have that self-care time set aside like even if i don't want to go to yoga i know going to yoga is going to make me feel better you know so like take that time and do something that's not grad school and that's not work even though I love my job <laughs> but still I'm sure I could make this list go on and on and on of things that for me I think is essential for my grad school journey but I'm gonna stop it right there because I've already said a bunch of things and honestly these all apply to me greatly and they might not apply to you but I hope that you looked at this and maybe you got a little bit of an idea of how to make your grad journey better or Maybe you're not going to grad school and you're thinking, how can I do it? And I'm telling you, it's honestly not that hard. <laughs> I have a full-time job and I was a full-time student for most of the time, except for now. Um, and as long as you are having that time management and you are understanding what, how you work, how you learn, how you survive, you can do it. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world that 
you feel a little tired here and there, you are going to be able to do it. It'll be okay. Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this video was cool. I mean, I'm just doing what I can do. Literally at work right now. Doing what I can do. Okay, goodbye.